Welcome to my show. Today we will talk about a story of a hero. The hero of humanity. The inspiration of mankind. Imam Hussein. Islamic lunar calendar marks the migration of Prophet of Islam from his hometown Mecca to Medina. This is known as Ijra. Muharram is the first month of Ijra calendar. 61 years after Hijra, on 10th of Muharram, which is known as Ashura, which is coincided with 10th of October, 680, Prophet's grandson, Imam Hussein, along with his family members and close friends, were brutally murdered, including his six-month-old son, on the plains of Karbala by the Umayyad Khalif Yazid. Imam Hussein is not just a grandson of Prophet of Islam, but he is also the third infallible Imam. Today, Karbala, Ashura and Muharram are synonymous to Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein is the son of Prophet's daughter, Lady Fatima Zahra and Imam Ali. And Yazid, son of Muhaviya, son of Abu Sufyan. Australia, as part of the international community, just to commemorate the tragedy of Karbala while keeping with COVID-19 restrictions and social distancing. The tyrant Umayyad Khalif Yazid used sanctions against Imam Hussein and his group of people by cutting off food and water supply, and besieged the caravan in the, in the hot Karbala desert in Iraq. We, we see today's tyrant regimes using similar tactics of those cruel Umayyads, yet we call them modern and civilized. Imam Hussein's message is, you know, was universal to attain freedom from all kinds of oppression and tyranny. He was the pioneer for the culture of enjoying good and for forbidding evil. He exposed the corruption of the selfish rulers of his time. This is why many, even today, try to stop the remembrance of Ashura by diverting away people's attention through concorded stories. In Sydney, Several centers organized various religious gatherings complying with the government requirements, restrictions, and protocol of, for COVID-19. Some of the centers catered for shifts of multiple gatherings for 10 days to accommodate maximum possible numbers to attend. The lectures reached maximum audience because they were also facilitated through live streaming, online, stre online live streaming and recording. Today we have three young Australians from different backgrounds to discuss the events of Imam Hussein, who elevated humanity, dignity, human dignity through ultimate sacrifice. So I welcome on behalf of my show and five news, Hussein Tirmizi, Hussein Tirmizi has a bachelor degree in business from the University of Technology, Sydney. He gives speeches on religion and youth-related subject at various Islamic centers. Welcome, Hussein Tirmizi. Then we welcome Ms. Shaima Al Nasseri. Shaima is a student currently studying at Western Sydney University doing bachelor degree in teaching. She's looking forward to become a teacher in the future. Welcome, Shaima. And we have Talib Mustafa Bismi, who is also a student from Macquarie University doing Bachelor of Applied, Science, Applied Finance. He's a youth speaker at various gatherings. Welcome, Mr. Bismi. Thank you. I would like to ask a question each. So my first question goes to Hussein Tirmizi. Imam Hussein's message 
He is to stand up against all kinds of injustice and oppression. When Nelson Mandela had been in prison for 20 years and was about to give into, into the demands of the apartheid government, suddenly he was inspired by Imam Hussein to persevere and continue his struggle. It is because of this inspiration South Africa able to dismantle the apartheid regime and end the oppression. At the same time, I was reading about um, Professor Charles Tallis Ferro, a professor of phys philosophy at St. Olaf College in the United States. He says, today's successors of Yazid are the people who have institutionalized oppression through modern tools, such as sanctions against uh, small countries, yeah. etc. So my question here now, oppression continues to date in many countries in many ways. Mm. How can we translate Imam Hussein's message so that it can reach these oppressed people, revive the spirit of sacrifice and obtain freedom? Uh, dear brothers, sisters, Uncle Hanif, all of the viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon each and every single one of us. When we think about the oppression that occurs in our modern climate, it's taken on a much uglier face than ever before. And this is because there is not only an oppression of the people, where a small minority of rich people hold all of the wealth and power in the world, there is also an oppression against truth. So what this means is when you have a mainstream media, for example, which limits the spectrum of debate and discussion to such a narrow point where anything that falls outside of this spectrum is considered uh, too far gone or is considered radical, things like that, um, then it does a huge disservice to everyone in society. So, for example, when you think about the media today, they're essentially funded by by corporate donors and special interest groups. And these special interest groups, they, 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 they limit the spectrum of discussion in such a way that anyone who goes outside of it, they are constantly dismissed. They are smeared. They are demonized by all of the media and large segments of society. Go back to the early 2000s during the, um, uh, during the Iraq war, for example. You have media journalists like Phil Donahue and, and, um, and uh, Jesse Ventura. These were people who spoke against the Iraq war. What happened? They got kicked out of their station. You go back to 2018, uh, you look at um, the CNN reporter Mark Lamont Hill. He got kicked out of his position because he spoke in favor of the Palestinians. Whenever something comes to threaten the, the status quo, quo to uh, threaten the existing power structure, it is dismissed all the time. So we face two kinds of oppression, an oppression against people and an oppression against the truth. And in this modern environment, there's an ugly, uh, ugly alliance between these two like never before. And you have this situation where there, anytime there is a crisis or a pandemic, we see today with the, with the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so how, how we translate that, uh, yeah. this, uh, how we can tr inspire people and yeah. translate Imam Hussein's message to those sure, oppressed sure. people. Yeah, so basically when you have a, s a system where the rich get richer, the poor get poorer during every pandemic and things like that, it is so important to remember the, the, the message of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam because when he was confined to Karbala, confined, confined to, to suffer the thirst and pains of Karbala for three days, he continued to resist no matter how much pressure was put on him, he continued to resist. And when you re resist collectively as a whole, and you retain your principles no matter what happens, no matter how much pain you suffer. That is the, that is the message of Imam al Hussein. Always principles over everything else. Because he gave a simple message to his enemies that you can have my head, but I will never give you my hand in allegiance. So, yeah, you have that message, you can draw inspiration from it. And Imam al Hussein himself, he embodies the message of Allah when Allah says in the Holy Quran, repel evil with that which is better. This is what Imam al Hussein did. He did not resist evil with more evil. Even if, for example, people kill our civilians, we never kill any of their civilians. And you see examples of Muslims killing innocent civilians in the West. 
This is not the example of Imam al Hussein, and there is no follower of Imam al Hussein who would resist in this kind of way. So it's important so, to draw so it, it is important to uh, resist evil mm. with good. With That's good. what Imam Hussein did. No doubt. So no doubt. yes, when I was reading the savior of Islam, mm. that is actually savior of humanity, actually. Yes. Because yes. there's a uh, consensus about the humanity. Yes. But uh, uh, so I hope that um, people can read kind of this book, and this is very important. This. Yeah. What you said is many, many things are included in this That's right, that's so right. Because Imam al Hussein, he said um, that even if you have no religion, at least be free in this, in this world. He wasn't just a, uh, just, uh, just a savior of Muslims, but of everyone. Just like the Prophet, Rahmatan lil Alameen, he was a mercy to the world, to all of existence, not just to the Muslims. So it's the same thing with Imam al Hussein. No matter who you are, you can draw that inspiration and resist collectively while still retaining so, so the principles. So as the Imam Hussein's message is universal, as I said, yes, and no it should doubt. be spread yes. universally yes. Um, beyond the religious boundaries. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. So and, and my next question to uh, Shaima. Um, Imam Hussein took his wife, sisters, daughters, and other ladies of his family, and other ladies of his family, it took it in Karbala. What was the significance of that, and what were their roles as a young Australian? Um, what you think you can relate to, and can you explain that, please? Okay, so basically, the message of Imam Hussein would definitely be lost without the women of Karbala. So, Imam Hussein knows what's going to happen to the women as well as um, his companions. But um, he done this for a greater purpose, so he kind of shows us women that we also have a duty and a role to fulfill in um, revealing the face of oppression. So the entire battle of Karbala and what the sacrifice was done for would have been lost, definitely. So um, I think taking the women and children with him to Karbala was done for the purpose of showing that women also have a role with their speech, with the power of their speech, to stand up in the face of evil. Even today, we see oppression all around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, definitely, we also have that duty and role. Yes, Imam Hussein and his companions, they fulfilled that duty with their swords. And um, of course, that's a great sacrifice. But where would this entire sacrifice go if it wasn't for the women who... Um, showed very powerful speeches towards the Yazid and revealing the truth to everyone along the way when they were held as captives. And I think it also um, kind of shows us the patience of Sayyidah Zainab and um, Umm al -Banin and many other examples of the women that were there. Um, they didn't really uh, become emotional towards the bodies, you know, they, they said to Yazid, like Sayyidah Zainab said, I see nothing but beauty. What does this mean? We need to look at the greater context of this message. It means that she knew this was all done for a greater purpose. The entire um, Islam that we know today would have been distorted if it wasn't for her spreading that message and showing what happened on the day of Ashura. So it's definitely important and it's a great lesson that um, we should all take as women and as men, no matter what evil we face and no matter what oppression we face, we must use our voice in the face of oppression. So, so I, I heard that and some of the books um, I read about uh, Lady Zainab, the yeah. sister of Imam Hussein, mm -hmm. it says that Imam Hussein was murdered, but the message is spread, what yeah. we have, as you said, mm -hmm. what we receive the message is through the women of Imam Hussein, yeah, like exactly. sp particularly Lady Zainab yeah. and Imam Hussein's daughters yeah. and other ladies, mm -hmm. they who actually took the message, that means the role of women in uh, the Imam Hussein's mission was greater than actually in male, um, yeah. man's message, yeah, man's role. Yeah. So women today has to have as a, a pivotal role about transforming the, uh, the society yeah. to stand against oppression. That's what um, I understand from the role of um, female in, um, in Karbala. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, answer and um, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. My next question goes to Talib. How important is the Ashura gathering 
despite the COVID-19 restrictions, we're still on restriction and social distancing for you. And what have you learned from these Ashura gatherings as young Australian? Because there is lots of uh, rituals, lots of um, special um, uh, activities during the 10 days. So could you explain an Australian perspective and a young um, public speaker as well? So what you learn and how do you translate that in your own words? That's a good question. Um, every year we commemorate uh, Ashura and it reminds me that um, what is the purpose of this commemoration? Why do we gather here to remember the death of someone 1400 years ago, right? Um, after researching deep into the meaning of Karbala and the meaning of the stand that Imam Hussein took, it made me realize that it is an event which um, is worth commemorating because it reminds us of our current stance and which side we are on when it comes to oppression and when it comes to the oppressed, right? You'll find, um, regardless of where you're from, your cultural background, your, your income, your wealth status, you have to stand up against oppression. This is a message of Islam yeah. um, that you can't just be a good person and be silent with oppression. And there's many um, parables in the Holy Quran that talks about the people of the past prophets who were good but did not stand against the oppression of their time. And Hell was the result of them. Because of their silence, they condoned oppression. Yeah. And so the whole message of Karbala is that there only existed 72 people to stand up against some narrations, 10,000, some narrations, 20,000 people. Um, many Muslims of that time, they were silent with it. And um, that was the great crime of these Muslims. So we have different levels of people, some with the oppressors who took the lands and the lives of Imam Hussein. Then you have those who are silent with the oppression. Those will be, they'll be grouped up on the Day of Judgment together. And then there you have the people who sided with the Imam Hussein. So every year you have to reevaluate your values and see, where am I on this, you know, this spectrum? This three, three spectrum. This three yeah. spectrum. Yeah. So you have to reevaluate yourself. You look at uh, um, the message Imam Hussein gave when he gave his life, right? He chose to die with dignity and honor standing against the oppressive tyrants of his time, rather than to live in silence in oppression. You'll find the same values happened in the American independence with uh, Patrick Henry when he said, give me liberty or give me death, right? He would rather die with the honor of fighting against the absence of liberty than to live in a state where he does not have freedom. And that's just essentially the values that we have in Islam. And every year we commemorate Ashura to remember those values. Yes, uh, that's a very, very good uh, answer and um, because you, the human being and especially in the um, Islamic uh, society there are th three categories of people. One is stand for the oppression, um, against the oppression, one is silently support the oppression and the one who pass the message of um, the oppressed. So what um, I, I, as I mentioned in my uh, introduction that uh, there are people Especially during the Muharram, when the Muharram starts, they said this is for the celebration of some concocted stories to divert completely the, op what Imam Hussein and um, uh, his um, family and friends gone through under the oppression. That people are actually, the, the people who say, say that Muharram, during the Muharram is a celebration, that people actually supporting the oppression. They are with the oppressor. Yeah. So that is important that either you stand with the oppressed or you have to stand with the oppressor. There is no third way. So I, I once again I highlight that um, Imam Hussein's message is not just for Muslims. It's for the entire humanity. As you said, Nelson Mandela is inspired and um, yeah. the um, um, American, what's his name? Patrick Henry. Sorry, say it again. Patrick Henry. Yeah, okay. So he also inspired. So many people, even today, is inspiring. Um, people are and uh, throughout the world inspired by Imam Hussein's message. And once again, my condolence to the uh, family of Imam Hussein and Prophet's family. And once again, we will all inspire from Imam Hussein's message to stay, keep our dignity as a human being, and they inspire, continue to inspire for the generation to come. Thank you very much for coming to the show and uh, you all well presented and uh, we really appreciate on behalf of Five News and on behalf of myself. And once again, thank you all you watching and goodbye.